Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Zueb Khan and I am a front-end engineer. This video is the start of a series of videos in which I will build up a complete sign-up flow with Angular Material Components and Firebase Authentication. At the end of this series, we will have a fully functional app which allows the user to sign up on our app and log in to an existing user with Firebase Authentication. Along the way, we will also get to learn about setting up reactive forms and Angular routing. So enough of theory, let's get started. In this first part, we'll be building the basic app structure with routing and the login form user interface. We'll have routing setup, and we'll have our login form where we can input our username or email and the password, and we will have our validation set up so that if we leave something empty, there would be an error message. And then we can go back to our sign up route and then go back to our login. Great, so let's get started. First, we'll create a new project. Now, I already have that project here. Then we'll add our Angular Material components with ng-add Angular Material. Next, let's quickly copy in the modules that we need in our app. Let's go to app.module. And we're going to import our modules. Great. We have mod our modules imported. Now let's set up our app structure in our template file. We'll first add a mat toolbar component. We'll give it a title and a login button. So we'll have button. We'll make it mat button. And then we'll also give it an icon. Great, uh, we can see that we have some progress. Now let's make the color as primary. Great, looks much better. Now we'll add some styles to it. And we'll have the matte toolbar justify content as space between so that our button can be on the far right. Great, this looks good. Now below the toolbar in our app.component, we are going to add our router outlet element. This is where Angular will place the component for the current route. In our case, this is where the different pages such as login, sign up, home page will be displayed. Talking of which, we need to create these components as well. So let's uh, use the N Angular CLI, ng generate component command, and use ng generate component and we're going to add everything to a new components folder. And let's first make, and let's also see where we are adding things. And then uh, put in landing to create our first landing component. Similarly, we'll do the same for our login, sign up, and for our home component. Great, we have our components. We now have everything required to set up routing. To add routing, we are going to add a new module since it is best practice to do so. We will do ng generate module, then app routing, and we'll give the flat parameter. The flat parameter is used to add the module to the same folder as the app module. And let's see where it's added. So great, yes, we have our new module here. The routing module needs to have a list of routes. So let's define those now. The first one will be our landing page and it will have a path of empty string and a path match of full. And we'll link it to the landing component. Uh, the second one would be our login component and the login route. So that will have the path of login and the component will be login component. Similarly, for our sign up and for our home page. The router module needs to import a router module and give the routes we defined in the for root. So we'll write router module dot for root and we'll give in the routes that we just defined. Next, we also need to add our router mo module to the export so that our app module can use it. 
great. Now let's go in our app module and add it to our imports. Great, so now we don't have an error here. Now with our routing setup, let's test it out by adding a login route to our button. We'll add router link and login to our login button. Now when we test it out, we can see that, okay, this is a landing page. And when we click on login, we go to the login route. Great, so our routing works. One little tweak here we need to add is to add a padding outside of our router outlet so that every page has some padding. So we are going to add a div and enclose the router outlet in that div. And then we add a class called content. And we simply add a padding to the content class something to the tunes of 32 pixels. Great, this looks much better. Now let's go to our login component and add our template. Okay, so before adding our template, let's first create the form group that we need. So we'll go in our component and we're going to create the login form. This will be a new form group and it will have two controls. One would be email this would be a new form control and the other would be the password. Great. Let's move on to the template now. We'll first add a heading, then we add the form element with the form group and then we'll add the mat form field corresponding to the email address. We'll add an input field inside of it and give it a directive of mat input as well. And then we'll give it a placeholder and a form control name, which would be email. We'll do something similar with the password field. The only difference would be that the password field would have a type of password so that we can hide it from the user. Below it, then we'll add a button, which will be our submit button. We'll make it button, a mat raised button. Let's also see how it actually looks and let's save it and test it. So yeah, not that good. Uh, let's continue and let's add the color primary for the button. We'll do color as primary and we'll add the type of the button as submit because we wanted to use to submit the form. And then the caption will give as login. Great, we have a button. Now below it, we'll also have a small text and a link to the sign up button. So let's add a span below it. This span will have some text, like for example, new to our platform, and then we'll have a link uh, saying sign up and a router link inside of it, which would link to the sign up page. Great, so we have our form in place. Let's add some styling now to make it a bit more professional in its look. Let's enclose our login form within a div and give it a class of form container. We'll copy this inside of the div and we're going to give a class of form container to the div. Now we can define this class in our login CSS file, but since we'll keep the same style for our sign up form as well, let's keep it in our master styles file. So let's go in styles.css and add our form container class. Now we'll uh, first add a display block rule to convert it into a block and we'll give it a maximum width of 300 pixels so that the width is restricted and then we have a margin auto so that we can center it. Then for the mat form field we want it to be 100% of the width and then let's quickly add some background to it. We'll give it a light gray background and a padding of 48 pixels and a border radius of 16 pixels for those nice rounded borders. 
great this looks much better now since we are here I want to also add some standard styles such as center which would just be a display flex and we'll just add a justify content of center then we'll have some margin top so that we have some standard margin to apply margin top of 16 pixels and then we have a text center which would text align the center great now, all, now that we have our style set up here we'll go back to our login page and then the first thing that we'll do is we are going to enclose our button in a div so that we can center it we'll add a class of center and a margin top as well but before let's copy it and test it okay now let's add a margin as well to it let's add margin top to it let's test it yes this looks good now let's do the same for our bottom span here we'll do it center and margin top great this looks good and uh, lastly we need to add some styling for the sign up so we'll add a class of sign up link this would be just increasing our font size here and adding a margin to it great looks good now let's also add for a cherry on top matte elevation Z5 which is a standard angular material class and it gives a little pop to our form. Great, so our form layout looks great now. Now we have just one last thing left now and that is to add our client site validations. Now validations are an important part of web forms. So let's go in our login.component TS and for the email control we are going to add two validations here one would be validators.required okay we need to import it here and then there would be validators.email so that we can ensure the correct email format for the password we'll just have the validators required validation great now when we look at our form and we for example if we leave the email address as empty we'll get this red outline but we won't get that message so we need to add a message to it as well we're going to add a mat error component here and here we need to check for the error but we can't do that before uh, adding some getters for our controls so we'll add a getter here for the email control and this is just going to return the login form dot get with email the same we'll do with the password now let's check here for email dot errors and the required validation and in the message we'll give a suitable message then the same thing we will do for the email format error and then for the password required field error great now let's test it out so now when we uh, when we leave it empty we have an error and when we add a wrong format we'll have the different error and if we give a correct value it won't show the error and similarly for the password great so congratulations we have our login UI all set up so in the next video we'll be adding Firebase authentication to the project using angular fire which is a clean and easy to use library for the purpose be sure to subscribe so you can get notified of future videos thanks for watching